Hey guys, Bruce, 51 Napco. Uh, just wanted to do a little mail call um, and also a little bit of a lesson on some of the stuff I learned in the Air Force uh, when I was uh, in age as an age mechanic. Aerospace ground equipment for you guys that don't know what age is in the, in the military, in the Air Force. It's called GSE in the Navy, ground support equipment. Anyway, this is uh, just by memory, and uh, but uh, there's a certain a couple of tools that we that we used, and some of them are kind of common also. But uh, let me go ahead and get the mail call out of the way first. Uh, first one I got was uh, let's see here. From nice guy up north in Livermore. Let me see, that's good. The Garage Files. Very cool sticker. And he also wrote a nice note to me. He's got, a, I believe it's a 57 Chevy. Uh, from just by memory, looking at his hood, he's got two lines down the top of his hood, which means it's a 57. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Anyway, it's a real nice truck. It's got a huge motor in it. And uh, it's really kind of neat watching him work on his because it's only one generation different than mine. And a lot of the things are almost the same, but not quite. But it's uh, inter very entertaining. Anyway, uh, thanks, Dennis, for uh, sending me this. And uh, I'll put it on my... What I've decided to do is uh, I have a big... A big uh, let me show you. I have a big Napco sticker on my dryer, and I've got a whole bunch of uh, room on my dryer. So the first one I put up was Steve's Garage, and uh, so I'm just going to start stickering that one up. And then I've got my washer also, which is completely empty. So that's what I've decided to do with my stickers. <clears throat> okay, then um, also got a sticker from... Uh, Tom Noble out in Vegas, and uh, it's really cool too. He's building a Camaro, late 60s Camaro, I don't remember the year exactly right at this point, but it's very cool, and he's doing a great job on it, it's very entertaining watching him too. Uh, so thanks guys for the stickers and as soon as I get mine made up I will as one of you guys mentioned in the here I will uh, save all the uh, um, envelopes and mail you out stickers when I get mine made up okay um, now let me point this down and I'm just gonna go through a couple of things uh, that might help somebody out Okay, one of the first tools that electricians use, uh, aircraft electricians, age mechanics, are dikes. These are called dikes because on the side view, there's a bit of an angle, and it's called their the true name is diagonal cutting pliers. So the diagonal cutting part, that's why they have the name dike. So anyway, that's one tool that we use. Then there's also very, very many different types of crimpers. I have a pretty cool set that I have. And uh, in doing aircraft work, this actually has a, a set of teeth in it. And you can actually take them out by unscrewing these screws right here. And there's different sizes. But it actually crimps two different parts of the terminals. I get a regular terminal here. So you have a standard terminal, solderless terminal here, and what it does is when you put it in, and then they're also color coded for the different sizes, but when you put it in here, you set it in directly like that, you get a crimp on the metal inner part that crimps the wire, plus you get a crimp on the outer part on this side that crimps the uh, insulation of the wire, so it holds it double. Um, a lot of this, the other crimpers, I got one laying around here, let me see if I can dig it out. 
these regular kind that you get from like Radio Shack or whatever, uh, they just crimp one time, which is plenty good for automotive work, but uh, they usually like to try to do things a little better in aircraft maintenance and uh, age. Uh, so anyway, this is the crimper I use, and it works awesome. Also, it ratchets, so it crimps down to a specific uh, specification before it will unlock itself. So it crimps, you can hear it crimp down, and it keeps going until you crimp it, and then it will open back up. So it's a pretty neat tool, and I'm sure that you can buy these. It's been so long, I don't even remember where I got mine, but uh, this is the this is the way that I would crimp to crimp uh, wire if I had uh, a choice, and I have it, so this is what I use. Then also, I have a another particular kind of pliers here. These are actually wire strippers, and the way these work. Well, let me get some wire because I'm going to be doing some wiring here in a minute. Okay, so you got a wire. So I'm just going to make this half the length that it is. So I just divided it in half. Got a pretty much a, an approximate measurement. You take your diagonal cutting pliers or your dikes and you cut it. Okay, now with the one that you want to put a terminal on. What you do is you take these strippers, and what it is is these strippers have two different clamping part portions of it. This side actually grips the wire. I don't know how good that shows up, but it grips the wire, and then this side of it grips down on the insulation and has teeth that cut the wire. So instead of doing it by hand, where's that thing at? with these and you just gotta hang on to the wire and go through and grab it. Uh, this type works better. Let me do a, another side note here. On this type of crimper and stripper, because it's everything, and pardon this tool, it's old and beat up and rusty. What you wanna do, which and it works the best, is if you see on these teeth, the cutting part portion of it, they're ground down in a diagonal towards one side, okay? You don't put the wire through this way. That's the, the wrong way to do it. What you want to do is put the wire through so the end of the wire is through the flat on the flat side, like that, because it will bite into the wire. Let me put it in the cor correct one. It will bite into the wire, and then you can pull it and strip it out and it works good. The other way, a lot of times the if your teeth are not perfect, uh, it'll just slide on the wire and you'll pull off the outer part of the uh, insulation but your wire still won't be stripped. So anyway, that's the proper way to use this type. Okay, now say, okay, so you got it at the end of your wire. Now with this type, you put it in, and what you want to do is you want to have approximately a quarter inch, no more than a quarter inch than, uh, of wire sticking out. So you put it here, and then you just go into the right uh, gauge wire uh, hole that you're going to strip, and you get about a quarter inch right there, and then all you do is squeeze, and... The one side holds the uh, insulation, holds the wire. The other side clamps down on the wire and strips it off. You get a perfect strip every time. So that's how you do it. Then you do a little bit of a twist on the end of the wire. And you're ready to uh, put the terminal lug on there. Now two ways you can do the terminal lug on this type of a crimper is you can put it in first and what I like to do is I like to put it in and I line it up so I'm square in the hole oops let me get another one here a 
Okay. If you see there, I'm pretty square in the hole. Meaning this way. The cr it's going to crimp this way. And that way, my crimps are going to be flat the same in the same uh, plane as the terminal. I just think that if you do every one of them the exact same way, it's going to make everything look neater. That's just how I'm just anal about it. But anyway, and uh, so you just put it in there. And actually, I went too far on that one. One problem with these is if you don't put it in right, you got to crimp it down. You ruin a terminal. <laughs> And then you got to start over. Or you put it in the wire first. But that takes a little bit more manual dexterity. But anyway, you go on to right about the edge of the end of the terminal. Somewhere in this area. wherever Some terminals are shorter and or longer. You just got to kind of play with what terminal you have. And mine, these ones, are just about right, right about here. So I click it down enough that I'm not squishing the terminal at all. You can still see it's perfectly round in there. So then, but basically I'm ready to crimp now. So then you take the end of your wire, you put it in the hole after you've done a little twist on it. And then you make it so you have about a sixteenth of an inch coming out. That's a witness that you know that you have the wire all the way through the terminal and you're going to get a good crimp on it. And then also after you're done, if anybody's looking you know, like uh, what we have in the military is QA, they can come and look at and make sure that you have all your wires crimped correctly. But I just do it this way. This It's just a practice that makes good, um, you know, if you do them all exactly the same and then you know that you have a good crimp. So basically you go a sixteenth out and then you put the crimp on it. And there you have it. You know you got your wire coming out the end about a sixteenth so it's not going to get uh, uh, in the way of the terminal if you're going to put it, you know, screw it on or however you're going to do it. And then you can also see this particular type of uh, crimp tool it crimps one crimp on the metal part and crimps the wire and the other part crimps on the the uh, insulation of the wire so that's how I do all my crimping so anyway I hope that helps and uh, it would be uh, to me recommend uh, recommendable to go out and try to find these particular t I'm sure places like uh, Northern Tool or Eastwood or uh, any tool companies that have a lot, a, b a good selection of some tools that have quality tools, you're going to be able to find this type of uh, uh, tool. But these are the two tools that I recommend for doing electrical wiring. And then also you need dikes. So anyway, that's my uh, little tip for the day on how I'm doing all the wiring on my truck. And... Um, what I'm going to try to do after I get this all finished is I'll try to do a little walk around and uh, um, let you see how everything came out. So far, I've um, done all the wiring. that uh, I've got all my headlights work, all my signals work, uh, flashers work. Uh, I blew out a bunch of bulbs because they were 6 volt. <laughs> but that, that uh, goes without saying because it's a 12 volt system now. And when I bought all my fixtures, the bulbs that were in them, because it's for a 47 to 53 truck, were 6 volt. So uh, I just got to get a bunch of bulbs that are 12 volt, and then everything will be perfect. Um, but I got all the engine wiring done. It's got uh, wire to the distributor, uh, starter, alternator, uh, all my lights. Uh, all, the only thing I really have left to do is uh, fuel tanks. Because I got dual tank, so I'm uh, wiring in a switch, and uh, then just buttoning it up every once in a every er, in little areas, and then uh, putting a Adel clamps, which are another aircraft thing. Just Adel clamping the wires wherever I need them, so they're held in securely, and uh, then I should be done. Oh, another thing I was going to tell you about the wiring is you have standard automotive wiring. 
which use this type of a terminal or splice. This is actually a splice, and they're plastic, and they have a little metal insert in them. There's also a kind of a cool thing that you can get in the air, uh, aircraft industry. This, it's kind of hard to see, is called an environmental splice. It's the same thing as this, only the environmental splice is made out of shrink tubing. And let me see if I can point good. This center part right here that's got a little bit of red is actually solder. And it uh, has flux also in the solder part. Then these uh, blue parts on the ends are kind of like hot glue. And then you have it all in a piece of shrink tubing. So when you put the wire in there, and then what you do is you have the other part that's commonly in this type of a uh, splice. You have the metal part, and then you have another uh, specialized crimp tool that you can use. But you just have the, the inner metal part. You put this on the wire first, then you put this part, the metal part that you'd have, you know, on the inside of this um, that are particularly for these type. Um, you crimp the wire. Then you slide this over it. Then you use a heat gun. And the heat gun, this solder is actually... Actually, um, I'm making a mistake here. You can actually twist the wire and, and just solder. Um, because the solder will actually solder the wire together. Um, it's been a long time since I've used these. And I don't have very many left. But I thought they were cool and I wanted to show you. So if I'm making a mistake... Uh, feel free to correct me on my comments if you want, or just uh, follow along with what I'm, what kind of uh, story I'm telling you about them. <laughs> anyway, uh, the uh, solder will solder the wire together, and then the heat glue, hot glue part on the ends uh, glue themselves to the ends of the wire. So when you're done, this whole thing is heat shrinked onto the wire. Both ends are sealed and the, the wire is uh, soldered together. So it's a complete uh, weather resistant uh, secure connection and that's why they're called environmental splices and you can use them in high damp conditions and you know things like that. Uh, they use them a lot in the avionics uh, career field. Anyway, I thought that might be a cool little thing to show you too and I apologize for kind of screwing up the uh, description of it but Anyway, that's what those are. So, back to my wiring, and uh, as soon as I'm done, I'll give you a little walk around of the uh, finished product, or as much of it as I can show you. Anyway, till the next update.